So, today is Valentine's Day, and I think, depending on the order that I decide to upload these videos, this is my first video back on YouTube. This is my first single Valentine's Day in like 10 years. Um, I survived my first single Christmas, so I'm sure a made up day like Valentine's Day will be absolutely fine, and I'm sure if you're struggling today, just remind yourself, it's just a day. You don't really need to be upset. And this is something I've wanted to talk about for ages and I've literally recorded this video maybe like three or four times, maybe more, maybe edited one and posted it and then decided I didn't really want to put it out there. About breakups, my breakup, heartbreak, coping with change and just basically everything that going through a breakup can bring. I just need to point out that I'm speaking personally from my own experiences. I'm not a guru, I'm not claiming to be an expert. This is just my advice that helped me. Advice for breakups is something I get asked about a lot online and in person and I guess people think I have good advice because people tell me you should do a video on it and here I am doing a video on it. I've actually written all of my tips down because I do have a terrible habit of just going off on a tangent so I mean it'll be easier for you to kind of work through them. I'll try and put the order in like the description box below as well. So I'm not going to like go into like the nitty gritty of my own breakup because I feel like that's kind of personal, uh, not everyone needs to know some things you've got to live rather than live and think you know what, I'm just going to talk a little bit about it. So I was in a relationship that was quite out there on social media. If you've followed me for a while, you will probably have been around when I was in that relationship. It was quite out there. I mean, we had a joint YouTube channel for a short period of time and um, we were always together. So I kind of expected to maybe have to speak about it. I kind of felt the relationship breaking down for a long time. Um, and I'm a very... I like to face things and just get rid of, resolve them, work through them as soon as they happen. I hate to let things drag out and hate to let things affect me, but I think we're all guilty when we're like in relationships or in a difficult situation of maybe going against what we actually believe or think that we believe. And sometimes we don't always uphold our standards. So one of the biggest things for me when I was in the relationship is I felt like I was letting myself down a lot, which was really, really hard. I think a lot of people have to get to breaking point to actually leave, which is a shame, but I was one of those people. The breaking point for me was when I was just in the shower one day and um, I actually just thought like, I don't know what I have to lose. I, like I don't know what I'm gonna, how I'm gonna be, if I'm gonna cope and if I'm gonna handle this. But it's gotta be better than feeling like this every single day, like I just couldn't do it anymore. So I was like, okay, this needs to be action. I need to take action and I need to do this. And I remember sitting in the car, crying to uh, one of my best friends, Josh, and he said like, like, like the scene in the notebook when he's like, what do you want? What do you want? It's not that simple. What it's do you want? <laughs> He's like, what do you want? What do you want to do? Like, honestly, tell me. Every single bone in my body, every single cell wants to leave. Um, and I knew, and as soon as I said it out loud, I was like, what the fuck are you doing? Leave. Because that's not only unfair on me and my well-being, it's actually unfair on the person I'm in a relationship with. If not be like giving them false hope and false promises, because I'm sure that they felt that everything wasn't okay either, then it was very traumatic for a number of reasons. After that, it was very, like my life literally felt like I just put it in a blender. And that's one thing I will say, like if you are in a shit situation right now, like do not be afraid to rip your life apart ruthlessly and put it back together how you want it to be. You can do it, you can always do it. Like you have the choice, it's your life, you get to design it. I was, I was basically like homeless for a short amount of time because like the house I was moving into wasn't ready. I was carless. So the whole situation felt like I had no independence because I didn't have my car in my own home and my own space, which I was so used to. I don't care what people say, like you cannot completely compartmentalize your life. Personal things affect professional things and vice versa. So um, I think it's really stupid that we try and compartmentalize our lives. It affected my business, it affected like work things. It just felt like I was like floating. But I do remember being in the midst of all that and thinking, I actually am happier <laughs> in the middle of all this shit that's going on than I was. So yeah, I think it's important to just know that at the end of it, you'll always be okay. Just keep going, just keep going, just keep going. So I also want to make clear that um, 
A lot of you who have reached out to me are under some impression and influence that I was super positive throughout and I stayed strong and I never, um, never like crumbled. Trust me, there were days that I literally questioned like, can I do this? Like, I can't do another day like this. I flew out to Greece and just after it happened and the entire flight, I cried like the whole flight. I didn't even think it was possible to cry for that long. And then I cried when I got there as well because I was on my own. <laughs> I was like, what have I done? I feel so alone. I had the low. I just think everybody has to go through them. So please don't let like social media or the fact that I am majoritively a positive, strong person with like my own mind put you under any impression or illusion that I stayed like resilient throughout and I was untouchable because I wasn't. There were times when I genuinely felt broken um, and that's okay. Like that is so okay if that's how you feel right now. I just hope any of these things that I'm telling you help you. Also like to just add, this is not uh, how to get your ex back or how to get back at your ex. Well, the things I'm gonna tell you are going to ultimately result if you implement them and you take them on board, you raise your standards overall. Like that ultimately is going to make you a more attractive person. So understand that if you do do some of these, it might attract attention back from your ex. Stay strong, uphold your standards, and don't crumble. Um, it's just not something I believe in. I always believe in forward progression, and as much as it does work for a small percentage of people, I'm not saying I'm totally against it, I've done it, but for the most part, it doesn't work. I'm single, so obviously going back to my ex never worked. Stay strong, baby girl, stay strong. Um, so yeah, so I'm just gonna start at tip number one in my hand because I'm gonna read them, otherwise you'll be subjected to 30 plus minutes of me chatting absolute shit. So number one, numero uno, focus on you and not them. Probably, like me, you have spent a lot of time thinking about your ex. So how trying to work out how they feel, why they behave in a certain way. Like that's a waste of time, it doesn't matter. Take this as an opportunity to focus on you. This is a time for you to heal, not to try and work out why somebody's behaving like cold or crazy. It takes time and discipline to focus back on yourself when you, especially when you feel like you've lost a lot of yourself into a relationship or in a relationship. I definitely felt like I sacrificed a lot of who I was um, to a relationship and it just drained the life out of me. So learning to channel my time, focus and attention back into myself was something that I found really, really difficult. Oh, let's not do that one. Two, <laughs> do things that help you grow and develop and thrive as a person. As much as it can be really tempting to just go off the rails and I think you do need an element of that. I really do, I did it. I always say that humans spend a lot of time basically causing themselves more pain, like constantly just stubbing their toe over and over again, like scrolling social media loads, eating shit, not exercising, just like sabotaging their own life and going out and drinking loads of alcohol, which I am a fan of going out, getting drunk with your girlfriends and having a good time, especially if you're going through a difficult time. But understand that if you're doing that all of the time, it's not going to make you feel good. Do things that also help you grow and thrive as a person and find inner peace. So like if you've been sidelining a hobby, go and do that. It might be yoga, it might be meditation. Things that help bring you back to who you are inside uh, and help you just feel a little bit more peaceful and grounded and also help you grow. Be easy on yourself, but also be rigid. It's that happy medium of like being kind to yourself, but also sometimes you've kind of got to exercise like your self-control and be a little bit more rigid and be like, is this gonna make me feel good long term? So a lot of things will bring instant satisfaction and you'll feel shit afterwards. Some other things require a little bit more work and a little bit more discipline, but they're going to make you feel great long term or they're going to contribute to your happiness, worth and success long term. So try and find like a balance of both. I feel like this is really important, like dead important. Recognize the difference between your emotional brain and your logical brain. You're obviously in like a, a highly emotional state and highly sensitive state. And I think we're all aware that when we're in that state, we tend to think irrational things or do irrational things. There are so many things that I almost did in the moment, like almost sent that text or that email or whatever. And then afterwards I'd be like, thank 
God, I did not send that or say that. And usually something would happen where, that would like make me realize like, yeah, you probably shouldn't do that. And I would have felt like an idiot had I done it. So always, if you get something that comes along in your brain, you think to do it and you're about to action it and you're not quite sure, always sleep on it. It will probably end up being a silly decision. <laughs> your gut generally always knows it can be can be confusing especially when you're in that highly emotive state is this my gut or am i just overthinking it and being a little bit idealistic and am i thinking too critically and over analyzing everything just trust your gut if it's not a good idea you'll know before and before and before get out like get out more <sighs> i mean most people especially girls and women in relationships tend to like seclude themselves and be like the perfect partner and miss out on a lot of things do not sit at home drinking wine in bed and eating ice cream and pizza like it's going to make you feel shit get out and do something i was lucky enough to be in a position where my best friend was traveling and island hopping in greece and i kind of believe everything happens for a reason and obviously as i said i was like homeless carless whatever and i was staying with a friend um which also meant i felt like a massive inconvenience so she texted me and was like circumstances have changed do you want to come and meet me in greece and i was like yes like i didn't even literally instinctively i said yes like i didn't even think oh well what about this what about that i was just like yes i'm going i'll make it happen <laughs> I did and like I live to tell the tale so just get out if you can go and travel if you can take a friend and go on holiday go and have some fun do some stuff do not seclude yourself like, obviously spend some time alone with your thoughts that's great and learning to be alone is a great thing but get out kind of like point number one use it as an opportunity to throw yourself into yourself so you can channel any negative thing like a breakup into a positive and it can just be a little bit of a kick up the ass to go and do some stuff that you've wanted to do for a long time perhaps you've not been prioritizing your health go and do that perhaps you've not been prior to prioritizing that new business idea go and do that repeat it over and over and over again this is an opportunity not a problem especially on the shit days Number six i feel like this might be a little bit of tough love but love is honest so accept the breakup the longer that you stay in a state of denial trying to win somebody back understand that you are too good to ever try and convince somebody to be with you so accept it the sooner you accept it the sooner you can start to take action you can start to be positive and you can start to get over it if you refuse to accept it and you live in denial good luck getting over it because it's you're not going to because you're going to stay in that state of denial i know that when i broke up with my ex i was kind of in this like state for a very short period of time like oh well what if i start getting over it and then i change my mind we'll deal with that when it comes to it but it's probably not going to happen so just accept it goodbye go walk out the door seven this is really important and this is important for so many reasons control or delete your ex or block burn whatever <laughs> block them on social media burn their things or give them back you don't have to be that harsh but burn like pictures and stuff of you it can be quite a liberating feeling i mean i didn't do it i just got rid of them um i didn't have to deal with them again seeing their name pop up all of the time is going to heave up a shitload of negative emotions block them on all forms of social media um one of the biggest things for me is it wasn't so much that i cared about what they were doing it was the fact that i knew that they could see everything i was doing and i wasn't getting up to anything that nobody could see like it was out there on social media it was the fact that like i could see their name and that name just brought back a, like a lot of negativity change their name in your phone book don't change it to something negative change it to something that's maybe going to trigger like a positive thought and doing those things will kind of put steps into place so that if you do get tempted it will kind of trigger you into remembering why you did it in the first place and you'll realize Number eight, stay present with how you feel, the good, the bad, the ugly, like embrace it all, welcome all of the feelings in. If you're feeling positive and motivated like you can go and get shit done on that day, do it, make the most of it, grab it with both hands. And the more that you do that, the more likely they are to come, appreciate them. But the bad days, 
like the days when you're like oh my god what have I done and you don't know if you're gonna make it through a day also embrace those because you have to go through them you have to go through the shit to grow through it like you can't grow and become stronger if you simply refuse to like go through them you don't really have a choice the bad day is gonna happen anyway so you might as well embrace it don't be in a rush to get over something don't force your feelings like don't try and convince yourself away from something if you're feeling something just allow yourself to feel that way good or bad don't expect everybody to be there so difficult situations often expose shit people but they also expose really good people it really makes you realize who you can trust who will be there for you and who values you like yeah it hurts that some people aren't there jesus i've had people who've outright stabbed me in the back like people that i thought were friends have actually like stooped way lower than i ever imagined that hurts as well it's cutting out another another negative person so you win always don't expect everybody to be there but recognize and appreciate those who are Number 10, because you're a 10. Okay, spend time alone. Like, get used to spending time alone. It's healthy, it's good for you. Don't just wallow. Okay, sometimes you can wallow, like that kind of goes hand in hand with staying present with how you feel. Sometimes wallow, if you need to, but try and minimize that as much as possible. But spend time alone, get used to your own company. It's healthy, it's good for you. And, I mean, I like being on my own. I'm quite fun, quite good fun. I mean, I do talk to myself a lot, so that, that might be why I sing to myself as well. Um, but yeah, get used to being on your own. When I said like, throw yourself into you. Uh, another thing that links to this is reignite your passion. So um, I've kind of sidelined things that I was really passionate about. One of those things was dancing for me. So I decided that I was gonna go back to dancing because that's what it really contributes to how I feel and who I am. You've probably all got things that you've maybe like sidelined, forgotten about, um, that you were passionate about and that used to make you feel like you. So go and do those. Go and reignite your fire or find a new fire that makes you feel alive, makes you feel happy, challenges you, pushes you to grow. Talk. Talk to people. Like... I have this conversation so many times I'm like why are you bottling this shit up because when you get things out they're usually nowhere near as bad as you think I always say if you don't give your emotions and feelings space i.e you don't let them out they'll find their own space they'll start to leak out into other areas of your life they'll start to affect your behaviors and therefore your relationships your work and life um so just speak just talk There's nothing weak about showing vulnerability at all like we're all human everybody feels broken from time to time everybody has shit days everybody feels down and most people have been through breakups or difficult or traumatic situations almost everybody can relate number 13 i feel like this is an opportunity for me to dance <laughs> music don't do all of that depressing stuff i feel like the theme tune for like life throughout my entire breakup and the end of the relationship was it's not right but it's okay by whitney houston um Go back up and even more so because i was literally belting it out and it must have been with some conviction when i was in the car with aforementioned x and they said um you're trying to tell me something <laughs> i definitely was subliminally not intentionally <laughs> doing that okay moving on anyway um next personal development i feel like this should be a focus for everyone whether you're single or whether you're not but when you are going through a breakup it can be really really useful to channel your energy into developing yourself personally so read books listen to audio books podcasts um join groups join movements invest time money and energy into yourself to grow i always say personal development is actually useless unless you use it so do a lot of it but also work on actioning and implementing that into your life don't forget the bad stuff don't forget the bad stuff our brains are like wired to think really nos nostalgically and like you are going to miss your ex or you're going to miss the situation you're going to miss having somebody around at some point and in that time like period you kind of get like this nostalgic feeling kind of look at it through like a rose tinted glass you wouldn't be in the breakup if things were as fabulous as your emotional nostalgic bullshit brain is trying to convince you
this is important why you need to delete things as well is you're gonna look like if you're looking back on videos of a time when you were like happier you'll almost try and convince yourself that you can get that back and I just don't feel like you can do that. You can't go backwards. You cannot. You can, they could even bring positive words to you, like promises. Like, I know that I was on the receiving end of, oh, what if I change and I'm the person that you met and blah, blah, blah. And for a second, for a hot minute, I almost bought into that shit. And then I quickly realised that through their actions and behaviours, that wasn't ever going to happen. That was not going to happen. Actions speak louder than words. How somebody treats you is a direct reflection of how somebody feels about you. This is really important, really, really important, especially if you're in the initial like bitter, angry feeling, which you should just get rid of because it doesn't serve you. Stop playing the blame game. It doesn't matter who's, who was right, who was wrong, who caused it, who was 40% to blame and who was 60% to blame. It doesn't matter who decided it was over, whose fault it is. It is what it is. So <laughs> it's happening. Doesn't matter who was to, who was at fault and who was to blame. We really get caught up in like they were wrong and I was right and blah blah blah. Like, does it really matter? Does it really matter? Is it helping you get over it? Probably not. And good luck trying to convince somebody that they were wrong. Well, I'm speaking from personal experience, but I could have spent a hell of a lot of time trying to make someone who is not willing to take ownership and responsibility of their shit take ownership for the shit that he did to cause the breakup. So I was just like, it's cool. It doesn't matter who's right and wrong. All that matters is it's done and I move forward. Don't fall for the gossip. Like when you're going through a breakup, people are going to talk about it often um, and people are gonna know and people are gonna kind of like draw their own conclusions based on maybe what you've said or what they've said or they're just gonna completely make something up. The truth will always paint itself. Don't waste time and energy trying to convince people of what's right, what's wrong, justifying your, your behaviours and your actions because, like, you don't need to. Like, I was in a situation and I knew that, like, the gym that I went to, everyone in there basically thought that I, the reason that we broke up is because I was cheating. And I just knew that wasn't true. Like, I'd never done anything but my ex had told people that so i was like okay yeah like if you're stupid enough and naive enough to believe that i don't want to be friends with you anyway great have a nice life people who know you value you and are worth your time will know the truth anyway that's all that matters stop trying to get back at them the best revenge is no revenge move on be happy. Stop trying to get back at them. Stop trying to do things out of spite. Stop trying to do things to make yourself appear happy and just focus on actually being happy. And yes, that might come across as like spiteful or resentful or like you're trying to get revenge, but you're really not. And that's the real win. Like actually genuinely making yourself happy will always prevail because you are happy and you've not done it from a negative place if you're trying to get back at someone it's always going to be from that negative bitter place and that's never good for anybody if you're about to seek revenge you better dig yourself two graves one for them and one for yourself like holding on to resentment and anger and bitterness is only going to inconvenience you it's literally whoosh, push. it is the beginning and not the end so you get to decide whether it makes or breaks you like i'm sorry you do any shit situation, you get to use it to your advantage or you get to use it to your disadvantage and you let it you let it make you a victim and you become a victim to it. Don't become a victim to your circumstances. Like, you are capable of handling it. So just after I'd gone through my breakup, I was in Barcelona with um, my friends and Josh said to me, like, I'm really proud of how you've handled this. Like, you've just got on with it. And although I didn't really feel like that, it made me take a step back and be like, you know what, like I've done pretty well. Like I'm proud of myself. Be proud of yourself. Be proud of yourself every single day, always. And I said like one of the biggest reasons for that is because I have recognised this as a beginning of the rest of my life rather than the end of my life. And he was like, people don't think like that. I was like, but they should. Like it's the beginning, it's not the end. There's always more, there's always more that you can do. It's always an opportunity for you. So it's the beginning, it is not the end finish on this point because I recognise that some of you who are watching this might actually be in a relationship that you're not essentially very happy in or you're not sure about. Um, 
So this might have given you a nudge or a push or at least been some food for thought. So I'm going to share with you a couple of things that helped me. Wasting time and energy and everything else, trying to convince somebody of your worth while simultaneously devaluing yourself because you're doing that is draining. It's time, it's energy you're never ever going to get back. Please know you are capable, you are amazing, you can do anything you set your mind to if you choose to believe it. You do not have to convince anybody of your worth, you, you just simply don't. You set those standards, you set those boundaries and you uphold them every single day. Relationships can be hard, relationships have their ups and downs but I think sometimes we convince ourselves of that and away from the truth which is our intuition which is telling us to leave and do what's best for us. So that can be hard, I get that. When I kind of knew that I wasn't happy and I wanted to do something about it, I kind of thought a few things, asked myself a few questions and I'm gonna pose the same to you. You are not meant to simply exist. I remember a client said to me like, you are not made to simply exist, Dom. And I broke down because I knew, I knew there was truth in that and that's exactly how I felt. I felt like I was simply existing. You should not feel like that, ever. Two, my Pilates instructor asked me this. Thank you, Georgie. Um, and I think this was something that literally played on my mind for days and days and days. And I read it in a book recently, actually. So maybe she stole it from the book. If you could walk into a room, there was a big red button. Nobody would know that you pressed it, but you did press it and you could be broken up with the person and none of the none of the baggage like none of the arguments the complications the logistical things would be an issue it all be sorted would you press it and the answer for me was yes I would press it now like give me the button give me the button give me the button <laughs> if you feel like that probably a sign ask yourself so I knew several times and it was a question I actually said out loud a few times if somebody spoke to your daughter Maybe few, like we might be futuristically speaking, futuristically speaking here. Somebody spoke to your daughter, your sister, your best friend, your mum, in the way that you are being spoken to, would you think it was acceptable? And would you stand for it? A lot of the time for me, the answer was no. So why was I accepting it for myself? Ever. Why was I sitting on a plane crying for two hours when I was supposed to be going on holiday? Because I'd been spoken to like shit and I knew that I was degrading myself accepting that. I wasn't upholding my standards. Like... You shouldn't be, you shouldn't be doing that. You should not. Don't be tricked into blaming yourself for like somebody else's shitty behavior. It's not you, it's them. What's the point of anything if ultimately it doesn't make you happy? Going back to me saying that relationships can be hard. Shit can be hard. Doing things on a day-to-day -day basis can be hard. It can be effort, it can be work, but ultimately you know that it's gonna make you happy. If ultimately something isn't making you happy, get rid of it. You only live once life is short. I'm gonna leave you all with one little quote. I deserve the world so I'm gonna give it to myself. That's not a dig at anybody but once you start to give yourself the world that doesn't mean that you can't have somebody else in it. It really doesn't. It just means that when you are ready for someone to be in it they're enhancing your life but they are not your life okay. I deserve the world and I'm gonna give it to myself. If you made it this far and you listen to me rambling, thank you. But this is a little bit off topic for me. Most of the things I am going to be posting will be fitness related because obviously that's my background, my business and my work and it's what I'm passionate about. But I think that all of this kind of stuff is also what I really like talking about. So if you have any suggestions, any questions, any feedback that you wanna give, then please comment it below. Um, and if you did enjoy this video, please like, share, and subscribe to my channel. I hope you have had a fabulous Valentine's Day and enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you.